You know, creativity is a habit. And the best creativity is a result of good work habits. That's a quote from Twyla Tharp. And it really, to me, is absolutely true. Um, people ask me all the time, you know, how do I deal with a lack of creativity or how do I deal with creative block? Um, and the way that I deal with it is that I do it every day. And by keeping that habit of doing it every single day, um, you're able to create a habit. Your brain creates a habit of being creative. One thing that I do to help my creativity is I want to make sure that all other aspects of my life are taken care of. And what I mean by that is I come into my office, I try to find a routine. I come in, I come down the stairs, I sit down at my desk, whether it's digital or traditional. I have a habit of doing the same thing every day. And by doing that, I'm not occupying myself with getting out of sorts because it's the same thing. I'm, I'm in the habit of doing that. And what that does is it frees up my brain so that I can sit and I can, I can meditate. I can think about what it is that I want to create that day. Now, if for some reason I'm having some trouble creatively, there's certain things that I'll do to spark ideas. And in this case, one of the things that I like to do is go, th go through old photographs that I've shot in the past. I keep thousands and thousands of reference photos that I shoot when I go on safari, when I go into the forests of Montana, when I go into uh, Nepal or Wyoming. Um, I've got thousands of photographs that um, inspire me. They take me to a certain moment. I'll remember every single moment that I, uh, that I experienced while I was taking those photos and uh, I can get inspired that way. Here, I want to go through some old photographs from 2011 uh, on my last African safari in Kenya. And as I'm going through, um, I've been using these photos for quite a while. And um, the, the photos that stand out, obviously, I've looked at them a thousand times. And when I get to this stage, I like to start looking at photographs that I've overlooked consistently and see if I can see them in a new light. And in this case, um, I've got a section of these photos where I've shot hundreds and hundreds of these leopards that, uh, photo photographs of these leopards that we came up on uh, as they were eating and walking across the savanna. And there's one that I, I did a digital painting of this a while back, but I'm looking at this image in a new way where this, the, the young cat is, uh, is drinking. And I just thought, man, wouldn't it be, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of water and reflections. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool to kind of design this in a way that the water wraps around the cat and we can get a full reflection of the cat drinking and get kind of a circular uh, composition. And so I think that's what I'm gonna do today. And, uh, and already now I'm inspired. And so this is, these are some of the things that I do in order to break that that mental that mental block. Once I get that big inspiration, then it's time to draw. And then it's, for me, I've gone past the inspiration. Now I'm into the the creativity of how, how is it that I'm going to portray this on the page? I have kind of a vision in my brain, but that's just the start. And I'm sure many of you have experienced this where you get an idea in your head of what you want it to be on the canvas or on the, on the screen or on the paper, but that's just the start. And you'll find that as you put it down, it starts to evolve even further from there because it's becoming concrete. It's becoming real. It's becoming uh, something more than just a vision in your mind. It's, it's something that you can see with your eyes now. And at this point, this is where you can start making adjustments. I find that my disciplines change at every step as I'm going through the creative process. In the beginning, it's just finding that inspiration. What's gonna, what's gonna inspire me to come up with an idea? Then once I get that idea, I have to form that into a viable composition. And then once I have that composition in my head, I have to get it down on the paper. I have to sketch it. Um, and like I said, sometimes I'm going to start sketching in the wrong place. I go to erase and move it out of the way, put it someplace else. But once I get that down, 
Um, this is the stage where I'm trying to be free. I'm trying to be loose. I'm trying to find the composition that I have in my head and get it down solid on the paper. That's what the pencil does for me there. Once that pencil drawing is done, I go on to my next discipline. I have to think about now, I'm moving over to the pen. I'm using a tool, black jelly pen, and a white jelly roll pen. Um, and I do it on gray paper. I like using the black and the white over gray because um, what the gray provides me is the ability to go either darker with the black pen or I can go lighter with the white pen. It almost creates a sculptural image because it's going both black and white, um, dark and light. And, um, and it almost hops right off the page. So I've got these tools and I want to start thinking now I'm not thinking about how to compose. Now I've, I've already got that. Now I'm thinking about how do I portray the image within the composition? So now I'm thinking form, but I only have line to do that with. So I want to think about how is this line going to follow the form to create an illusion of form on the paper? And these are disciplines that I've honed over, you know, 30 years of drawing. And, but even still the, you know, every time I draw, every time I, uh, do something new, I learn a little bit more and, uh, and over time that builds up and you'll get better and better at it. One thing I love about drawing cats, especially cats that have markings like stripes or in this case spots, you can use those markings to portray the form of the animal. So now my brain is going into another mode. I'm thinking, okay, how is this form turning and how do the spots sit on the form in a way that's gonna help, once again, portray the form. It's not just the hatching of the shading that I'm using with the lines, now I'm using those spots and all of that together combined creates a form that creates an illusion of something that's three-dimensional within that picture plane. Now, once that's all drawn, now I really want to take it to the next level, which is taking it, uh, and I'm thinking more about light now. And so I use Copic markers to push some of my grays even darker. Not quite black, but just a little bit darker. And here I want to create a backlit scenario. So I'm kind of throwing some Copic marker over the entire cat, creating some shadow in the ground. And then I use that white jelly roll pen and create a rim light around the cat, just an accent. And I find that, you know, in good design, um, very often you just need a touch of something to really make it sing. And in this case, it's just a touch of that rim light that's really gonna help this image kind of pop right off the page. And with the reflection that I've created, the curved grass on the side, all of this, I've created a composition and lighting that I think is really dramatic and I think is gonna be really pleasing. So in conclusion, you don't always have to sit down at your desk and really know right away what you're going to do. You know, like I said, good creativity comes from habit. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And, but there are going to be times when you just, you need a kickstart. And so, like I said, you know, find those things that can help you find that inspiration, whether it's photographs that you've shot in the past, videos you've shot in the past, movies, books, any of that kind of stuff, a walk outside, anything that will free up your brain to just kind of let go and start feeling creative. Those are the things that you want to do. So I hope this helps you with your creativity. And, uh, and if it does, then go on out there, use what you've just learned, put some beauty back into the world because that's what we do as artists. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will talk to you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.